Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful planet of ours. Welcome to Inspired Living Radio. I am your host, Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, coming to you live from my studio here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of Seattle, Washington. And today we're going to have a good show. It's going to be a teaching show today, uh, something that I'm doing a little bit more as we move closer to 2020. And I'm going to be sharing the spiritual prospecting, the spiritual struggle, the spiritual journey of what it's like to walk between the physical world of what we see and to also know that there's another world out there that we don't see with the physical eye, but we see with our third eye, or we feel, or we have what I call sign, symbol, synergy, and synchronistic events. So, but before we get into the uh, details of the show, I'm going to also be doing a meditation with you, talking about, you know, the ego mind, talking about um, the spiritual mind, talking about what it is to have a near-death experience, or what we call an NDE, or an out-of-body experience, an OBE, uh, something I've had both in my journey, and also talking about the grieving process and what we call after-death communications or at ADCs. So with that, thank you for tuning in. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, sit back and enjoy the next uh, 45 plus minutes as we talk about philosophy of spiritualism, the etheric world, what it's like to walk between two worlds. And if you want to work with me directly, you can go to marklaneheart.com. You can internet search the intuitive prospector. I'd love to do a little spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual transformations, healing, and of course, spiritual goal. If you want to work with my co-host, Kim Thalkin, founder of Love First, you can find her in Encino, California. And she can be reached at lovefirst.info if you want to learn more about the work she's now doing in California. So with that, we also have our social media pages. We have a couple pages that you can follow, Inspired Living Radio. Facebook is our main page, so if you want to ask a question in regards to today's live show, you can go to Inspired Living Radio, ask to join the global community of inspired listeners all around the planet listening in today, and ask your question there. If you want to come live on the air with me, you can call Ohm Times Media, and Chris, our producer, will bring you into the room. The number to call is 202 202- Five seven zero seven zero five seven. So you can interact with me live on the air, or post a question to our Facebook page, which I, which I said was Inspired Living Radio. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the the handle Inspired for Us. And again, that's the number four. So a couple ways to interact with us socially: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or you can call into the live show two zero two five seven zero. 7057. If you're catching this on a replay or a podcast, you can always catch all of Inspired Living Radio's four plus seasons over on Ohm Times Radio Archives. You can also find us on iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Podbean, MarkLaneHart.com, and LoveFirst.info. And with that, we like to say you are the inspired and the inspiration, and we truly mean that, and we appreciate all of you tuning in to any episode or catching a replay on the podcast. It's been a fun four seasons, uh, but like with everything in life, change is coming, and I I, I can't officially announce yet, but we're going to be having some changes to the show. We're not going to be doing as many uh, shows moving forward next month and into 2020, but Inspired Living Radio will be coming back for uh, future episodes of what I like to say is spiritual awesomeness. So let's talk about today's show, which is about walking between the physical world of what we see and the unseen spiritual and etheric world. 
Now, a lot of you, if you're listening to today's show, um, a lot of you know what I'm talking about. You've had a connection. If you've lost a loved one, whether it's a family member, a friend, a fur baby, you've had that connection to them after they've left, after they've left the physical world, whether it's through a dream or whether it's through a thought. I always like to say that the spirit world, the etheric world, and those that reside there are only ever a thought away. And you may find yourself connecting through the power of music, the power of a book, the power of a movie. All of these are triggers to connect with us because they don't have a voice to communicate with us anymore. And if you think about how I'm communicating with you right now, I'm really just taking a vibration off a cord, my vocal cords, that allows me to create speech and communications and words for your ears to pick up. So when, when the voice goes away as a medium, we become the voice for the voiceless. But I also, as a metaphysical teacher, like to teach on how everybody can touch the etheric world, the spiritual world. Now, some of you listening might not believe in spiritualism or uh, life after death. You know, some of you out there may be agnostic, which means you want proof of whatever God is, whatever is after death. Some of you may be atheist, which is not believing in anything that once we die, that's it. That's the end of the journey. I can tell you from my journey of you know opening up to the world of uh, spiritualism, mediumship, psychic uh, sciences, spiritual healing, intuition, and the hundreds of readings I've done since I've been doing this work for the last eight years as a professional, there's something to this, guys. There, I'm either really a hell of a guesser or there's something to it, and I don't think I'm a very good guesser when it comes to this. And when the spirit world are those what we call in the etheric world, and the etheric world means that in spiritualism, we talk about when you incarnate into physical form, you come here from an energy based and have a physical body or this physical flesh suit. And when your journey is done here and you've come here to learn and to grow and to transform and evolve, when you leave this physical body or you leave this flesh suit that we have, you return back to source, just very much like uh, the water. Water has different elements. It uh, you know, can go from uh, liquid to steam to ice and, and so forth. And if you think about our journey, we've done the same thing because before you were breathing air, you were actually breathing liquid in your mom's womb. You did that for nine months and then all of a sudden you popped out and you take this big breath in. And so when you decarnate, which means leaving the physical form and move back into whatever your belief system is, uh, whether that is heaven or hell or no belief system of anything after, the, the energy in your heart metaphysically always has to travel somewhere. So today I'm going to be talking about going a little bit deeper in uh, the, the four aspects of ADC, something that you can trigger, um, you can test out on your own in your own journey and your own path, something that I really struggled with for many years because I come from a background of uh, being in the U.S. Coast Guard, being a firefighter, being a lifesaver, being called to other people's tragedies, and always having the mindset of reasoning, logic, critical thinking, and not really getting into what Einstein referred to the right hemisphere of the brain, which is the creative side, which is you know where all the power really truly lies, and opening that side of my brain up to what is unseen and only felt, and how the spirit world, like I said, can connect with us on many different levels if you're open to it. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about universal law in the spirit world. They're not going to overstep their uh, their bounds and their boundaries. If you don't want to connect, they're not going to connect. But if you're open to it and you start to set intentions, the energy follows that intention. So we're going to be talking about the, the categories, which are um, what I call ADCs. And um, this is something that's been around for in research for call. several years now. Call. Uh, I know one uh, institute um, is the Woodbridge Institute in uh, Arizona that does a really um, great job of testing mediums and really looking at uh, how after death communication communications take place. Because again, how do you communicate with somebody that no longer has a voice? And mediums, um, you know, there's a lot of mediums out there and, and some that I've studied with, uh, you know, that are well known, have been great mentors and great friends and others that I've watched and observed and how they, you know, communicate. Every medium is different in how they communicate and bring through information, but there's still a process. There's still a uh, study that's going on looking at mediums and how, what, how the brain works, how are they receiving this information, and it's quite fascinating. And so we're going to spend the next half hour talking about that, the, 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 the four main categories of ADCs, 
um, how you can actually trigger the spirit world and those that live there in the etheric world to come closer to you. And we're going to have a lot of fun. I think, it, you know, life is short. Question everything. I know in my journey, I question a lot. And I really came to spiritualism uh, and I came to mediumship and I came to metaphysics and I came to psychic awareness and intuition through great trauma and tragedy. That was the catalyst. That was the uh, that was the energy that triggered me to start thinking differently. Now, not everybody is on the same path. Just like I said, not every medium is the same. In fact, every medium should be doing their own thing and shouldn't be copying anybody because it's your own connection to the spirit world and the voice uh, being a voice for the voiceless. And for me, I spent a, a few years grappling with what I call the spiritual struggle, trying to understand, have I lost my mind? Am I hearing voices? Uh, you know, I hadn't gone through death and dying. I'd been called to other people's, you know, trauma and other seeing other people move into the spirit world, whether it was from a house fire or a motor vehicle accident, or they jumped off a bridge uh, and taken their own lives and having to, you know, recover their body, or being on an airplane crash where I'm literally pulling bodies out of the water um, and wondering where do these people go. And when you think about the amount of people that transition from this physical world into the spiritual world, I've done uh, former shows on that. I can't remember if I did it here on Inspired Living Radio or my uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, show called Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, where I talked on average, there's about 50,000 people a day that transition through death and dying back into this unseen world. So it's interesting about, you know, worldwide, that's about how many people on average are moving into um, the spirit world. And so for me, it really was more of a question when I started to have my own trauma and tragedies of losing my uh, my father-in-law, my brother. Uh, three days later, both brothers passed into the spirit world. My, uh, uh, my real father. Uh, I started to really question my grandma, who I was really close with. I really started to ask this question, what is life after death? And I think that it's a very, you know, when it comes to the experience of after death communications, I found that they're actually quite normal. They're quite common and they're usually healthy because you're still acknowledging through the power of love and the memory of somebody that you had a connection with and that's proof of love because they're not here in the physical but you still love them but they're still very much in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. They're very, very much around us. Uh, a lot of times these experiences and if you're listening to the show, you know these experiences I'm talking about, deja vu, a dream, that song that just comes on, it reminds you, a body double, somebody that looks just like the person you knew in life where you're actually staring at them or you're taking a triple take going, oh my gosh, have they come back from the dead? And we call those body doubles. Um, the spirit world can connect through numbers. Um, you know, mathematics is the universal language. Uh, the universe doesn't speak in terms of English, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, it actually speaks in the terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Something Nikola Tesla talked about in the late 1800s about unlocking the secrets of the universe. He was onto something. And I think that's why he's very much celebrated in today's modern day society because he was really starting to look when you think in terms of that energy, frequency, and vibration of unlocking these doors that have been re remained closed to us for several years. And it wasn't until the Fox sisters in 1849 in upstate New York, Hydesville, New York, where they what are called the Hydesville wrappings really started to unlock the, the communications, the intelligent communications of those that are no longer here. So with my journey, I started to, you know, going through the grieving process, the transformational process, the, the curious um, process of, you know, what does happen after we move from the physical or we decarnate back into the spirit world. It really just got me questioning everything, and that's where the Intuitive Prospector was created to really prospect and work hard to try to uncover the answers or the spiritual gold that I was looking for. And along the way, there were struggles because, you know, when we're having these experiences, we don't really necessarily bring them up. Uh, definitely when I first heard the voice of spirit for the first time, my, my ego mind kicked in and said, oh my gosh, you're schizophrenic, you're hearing voices, don't say a damn thing. Don't tell your wife, don't tell your friends, don't tell your family. 
And there was a fear of that. There was a fear of being judged or ridiculed um, or the thought of mentally ill, which is something that we're dealing with today uh, at a very high level of mental illness. And so for me, my ego wants to protect me. It wants to you know, make sure that I'm uh, navigating the roads of life, but it jumped in and said, oh, no, no, you can't do this. And so what that did is it started to get me to prospect to understand what I was seeing with my physical eyes, but what I was also seeing with what we call the third eye or what I was feeling uh, these impressions because my skin clairsentiently, which is the ability to feel my skin, which is the largest organ on the body, was having these different sensations of um, feeling somebody close to me or seeing a vision in my mind that I didn't understand. And so when we come back from our first break, I'm going to get into detail about the uh, categories of after-death communication. I'm going to talk about a little spiritual philosophy. Uh, we'll, if we have time, we'll even try to do a mindfulness meditation to see if this can draw close. If we can, you know, at home, you can try this and give it a go. So we'll be back here in uh, two minutes, uh, pick up where we left off and talk about uh, the spiritual pathways of walking between what is seen and what is unseen. And we'll be back in two minutes here on Inspired Living Radio. You are the inspired and the inspiration. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. when you're looking for insight and additional tools to living your most elevated life. There's no better place to turn than Intuitive Alchemy Radio. Join me, Laura Brown, each Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations, live on-the-air readings, and tools to help you build your most aligned, most abundant, and most delicious life. Death Row Dogs Rescue is a 100% all-volunteer, no-kill rescue 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are run solely by volunteers who dedicate their time and resources for the past 30 years to rescuing homeless pets from the streets in Los Angeles and surrounding areas and from city and county animal shelters who are on death row often moments away from being euthanized. We provide housing medical care, and training to these neglected, abused, and often severely injured animals. Donate now, save a life, and allow these beautiful dogs to experience a home life filled with love. All donations are greatly appreciated and are tax deductible. Please visit www.deathrowdogsrescue.com to see some of our amazing dogs who need homes. Do not breed or buy. Make adoption your first option. Hey everybody, welcome back to Inspired Living Radio here on Ohm Times. You are the inspired and the inspiration. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon or this morning or evening, depending on where you're at in the world and if you're listening to the live broadcast. 
Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you catch us on a replay or a podcast, again, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us and talking about what I refer to as the spiritual struggle of what we see with the physical eye and then walking in a world that is unseen, very much like the wind and only seen with our third eye or feeling or just knowing. And I'll get into the different clairs and things that I've, you know, been working on over the last 10 years to, you know, um, demystify the death and dying that we're all guaranteed to have. I mean, if you think about it, we're all here at the uh, table of life. We all have different experiences. We all have different perceptions. We have different beliefs. But at the end, we all go to the same place, and that's death, whatever that means for you. And that means that we're really walking each other home at the end of the day because of two things in life guaranteed. Well, I'd say three things in life guaranteed these days, taxes, death, and change. And I found that change is very consistent with life. And we're going to have some changes coming up to Inspired Living Radio as we move forward next month into November and also into 2020. I can't um, ex officially announce yet, but there are some changes definitely coming. And I hope that you'll tune into future broadcasts to hear what those changes are going to be. Uh, they're going to be fun. Uh, maybe not as many shows as we used to do, but we've been doing this for four years, guys. We've had four wonderful seasons of Inspired Living Radio. And next week, I'll actually be off because I'm going to be traveling. So um, either uh, my co-host, Kim Falcon, uh, will be on or we'll be doing an encore show. And then we'll be uh, doing um, a final show on uh, October 30th that we'll uh, give more details to. But again, if you want to work with me, you can go to MarkLeanHart.com, Internet Search the Intuitive Prospector. You can catch me through the Alexa and Echo Pod. Just ask to open up Positive Living and get spiritual daily tips of exactly what I'm talking about today and the spiritual pathways. And there's many pathways to the spiritual etheric world of energy, frequency, and vibration. And you can also catch me every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays, inspirational show for the week ahead, followed by the Healing Cafe, where I have direct conversations, readings, spiritual chats with all of my amazing 30,000 plus spiritual prospectors. So thank you so much for hanging out. And let's continue talking about the journey of um, spiritualism and the the struggles that you may be having when you feel something or you know something or you see something in your mind but your rational mind doesn't know how to equate or understand what's going on and I again I found this with people that part of my studies has also included looking at the background of people and their story which allowed them to open it up to this awakening and I found that there was usually some sort of shakening that caused the awakening now some of you listening uh, to the show ha were born with this I don't know if I was born with it um, if I did it lay dormant for several years until I was at the age of 27 and the age 27 is very interesting to me if you look at uh, a lot of the singers, a lot of the famous singers, they actually passed over at the age of 27. And now I'm 47, so the 27 and the 47 year mark have been very interesting years because the 27 was the unfoldment where things really started to open up with getting the phone call that my brother had been murdered and then three days later my older brother was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and my father-in-law was passing away at the age of 47 uh, with multiple sclerosis. So 27 kind of unlocked the door and for the last 20 years I've really been exploring and prospecting to get a better sense of what is going on and even at the age of 47 my own body, my own alchemy, my own cellular makeup started to change with my testosterone, my adrenals, uh, doing a lot of this work and working energetically with my nervous system. So it's been quite an interesting journey from a health standpoint this year of what I've gone through transformationally. And that's for everybody because again, one of the things I was saying at the beginning was the thing consistent in life is change and we should all be changing. I had posted a picture with a, a, a caterpillar sitting at a table uh, having a cocktail with a butterfly and the caterpillar says to the butterfly, man, you've really changed. And the butterfly's response back was, we're all supposed to. So I want to read this quote from John Denver, <clears throat> which I actually have three degrees of separation from John Denver through my uncle who is in the spirit world. Um, so I wanted to read this quote from John Denver and it says, death is not an ending, but a symbol of movement along the path upon which we are all traveling. As it may be painful to lose contact with the physical aspect of one we love, the spirit can never be lost. We have been and always will be a part of each other. 
And that was John Denver who said that. He was a very spiritual guy. A lot of his music he talked about, he wasn't sure where some of this music and words came from, some of the melodies. And I always think of it, you know, that kind of like technology, we're downloading and uploading all the time in your in your journey. Think about how you woke up today. What were your thoughts when you when you opened your eyes? First, did you have gratitude for being able to open your eyes and, and, and celebrate life and carp diem today? And what were your thoughts when you woke up? Your thoughts are energy going out, so you're technically uploading thoughts. The question is, are you listening back through the power of meditation, sitting in silence, sitting in, um, you know, some sort of meditative state to listen back to the, the questions you're as, asking. And so really we're uploading and downloading all the time when it comes to our memories, our thoughts, our wants, our desires. And metaphysically that's always been very, very interesting to me. And for those of you that you know may be asking, well, I'm too old to get into spirituality or I'm too young, you know, C.S. Lewis always reminded us uh, that you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. And for me, I always say dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live because life is short and you should be questioning everything. And that's where, you know, for me, that's where it really started to open up because I didn't understand what I was feeling and what I was seeing and, and knowing, just knowing certain things. For you moms out there, you know this, what we call claircognances. When you know your son or daughter is up to no good or they're in trouble, like literally life-threatened situation, the mother instinct, the mama bear comes out and that's what we call claircognizance. It's a sense of knowing even though the mind wants to rationalize. So I wanted to get into talking about the ego conversations that we can have with one another, what I like to call or teach on is self-sabotage. Because in a given day, if you think about all the thoughts that you have, 50 to 60,000 thoughts on average per day pass through your brain, just like osmosis, water passing through a membrane, what are you taking from that? Just like your brain is, is the membrane and the thoughts passing through is just like osmosis. And the question is, are you thinking the same thought, you know, over and over and over again? I would say probably 90% of the, the population out there is in this mindset of thinking the same thing over and over again, kind of like Groundhog Day in their mind. You know, I always ask myself, if I hate a movie, would I go to this movie 10,000 times? Would I go to the movie theater 10,000 times to watch a movie I hate? The answer is no. So it's all about changing your mindset. And again, your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your behaviors. Your behaviors become your habits. And your habits usually lead you to your, your destiny. So when I started to unfold at the University of Washington, I actually went to college. I know that I think about this. I went to college to learn mediumship and metaphysics and meditations and mindfulness. And I paid for that and uh, I didn't know that I would be doing that years later. But what it did when I started to unlock and to unfold or to transform, I started to really go deeper into understanding, okay, is this for real or is it fake? Is this just a way to make money? Are people doing this for the wrong reasons? Is it just smoke and mirrors? All the skeptical things that I had in my mind is really where I went, you know what, I'm going to go down to a place called Berkeley Psychic Institute in California and give it a go. And I unlocked a, my first course called Intuition 101. So it's just like going to college or just like going to high school. You take your 101 courses in college. You take your, your um, I don't know, your algebra class in high school. I'm Just so you know, I have yet to use algebra in my adulthood um, to this date. So I'm not sure why I learned algebra, but um, you have to jump through that hoop. So I went down to the Berkeley Psychic Institute in California and I took Intuition 101 and we worked with cards. We worked with impressions and feelings and I thought, oh boy, what am I getting myself into? And this would have been 2008, 2009, uh, as I was taking my graduate studies in sports medicine. So I thought I would be working in sports. Well, I really started to see that there was something to this. So I said, you know what, I'm going to challenge myself to go to an actual workshop. So I signed up for a workshop down in Dallas, Texas under the name of Lisa Williams, a very well-known international spiritual medium and psychic, had a television show. And I, 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 I don't know how she came into my awareness, but I said, you know what, I'm going to sign up about going deeper with mediumship. And it was an advanced mediumship class. I thought, oh my gosh, what am I getting myself into? And I thought, okay, I'll apply. There was over 2,000 people that applied. She was taking 75. She responded back to me directly and said, I love your story. I love your journey, what you've gone through. 
Now, mine, just to jump back, I didn't have my spiritual practice today. I didn't have a radio show. I wasn't doing the work that I am doing today. I had really nothing except that I loved Star Wars. I loved how the Force connected us together. And there was actually, long story short, a connection through Star Wars that she wanted to invite me down to participate. So I went down to this advanced mediumship workshop and really started to see things unfold. But again, as the intuitive prospector, I was prospecting, searching for that gold nugget, that diamond within. And I, I always remind my students and the people that I mentor, if there's no pressure to what we do, there is no diamond. You want to find the diamond within, but you've got to put yourself through learning, failure. And what I mean by failure is first attempt in learning. I always say fail often, fail big, because you're here to learn, you're here to grow, you're here to transform, and you should never be in the same place. Even at the cellular level, your cells every five to seven years completely die off and new cells grow. We call it aging as well for, for those that are losing our hair or for those that are losing the eyesight and having to re put the readers on. You understand what I'm talking about, but you're changing cellularly. Um, and for me, it was you know putting that pressure that um, anxiety and that can I am I good enough and what if I don't connect anything and going down to this workshop in uh, Dallas Texas to study under Lisa Williams which then led me to the Berkeley or which led me to the Omega Institute in upstate New York to learn under a gentleman well known on the East Coast by the name of John Holland and a former nun of 30 years turned psychic medium Janet Nohavik. And I spent a week with them understanding and going deeper with my journey, which then led me to the Arthur Finley College in England, uh, just north of uh, London. Um, very similar to what uh, J.K. Rollins has penned on Harry Potter. It's very interesting. And this is a college that's been around internationally for since the mid 1800s. So it's been around for some time and its focus is on mediumship. It's on spiritualism, uh, professional spiritualism and, and professional psychic and mediumship the right way and how to connect with the uh, the unseen world. So all of that journey of prospecting led me to where I'm at today to have this podcast with you, this radio show to um, you know connect and do the readings. And it's been quite a journey. But again, without that pressure, I wouldn't have found the diamond within. So if you're listening to the show, know that the ego is going to have a conversation with you, the ego mind. And when you start to un, uh, you know unlock that there is an ego, and I always say name your ego because when you have a name to it, for example, mine is Igor, you start to understand that there is thoughts that come through your head that you don't have to believe all the time. And there's also a higher self that's trying to come through that diamond through applied pressure that's trying to connect with you and talk to you as well. So again, just because you are having these experiences and you're, you're fearful of being judged or ridiculed, um, you know, or that you might be mentally ill, just like I thought I was schizophrenic. But again, we usually don't diagnose ourselves if we have gone crazy. In my experiences of working in, in um, mental health and working in emergency medicine, and if you're having a conversation, you're rationalizing this, then that tells me that that awakening is starting to take place and that unfoldment, that alchemy change that you're going through has been a catalyst based on what you've gone through. And maybe you've had this your whole life. Maybe you were naturally born with this and that's something that you've come to terms with. For me, it was the age of 27 that unlocked and I had to go from there. So, you know, here's, here's the ego conversation. I made the wrong decision. That's what the ego is going to tell you. But your higher self kicks in and says, you know what? There was something I needed to learn here. I needed to grow from that. I need to observe that. What was the lesson in this? Your ego might tell you life is unfair. Yeah, life is unfair. There's a lot going on in the world right now. Uh, there's a lot of things that are unfair and not right. But your higher self goes, you know what? Life gives me exactly what I need to grow and to evolve and to transform. But then the ego goes, you know what? I can't trust anyone. And I just literally had this conversation uh, today with my day job. I don't do this work full time. I actually have a, a federal job that I do in healthcare inspections. And um, I had this conversation, you know, you can't trust anyone. You're going to get, you know, uh, backstabbed again. Or you're going to get screwed again. Don't do it. But then the higher self kicks in and says, you know what? The person you're struck, the, the person you are struggling to trust is yourself. And that's the journey. That's the diamond that you're looking for is trusting yourself. And then the ego says, you know what? They've betrayed me. And your higher self goes, you know what? They allowed you to see who they were beyond the story you created about them. And so that's just a standard conversation that all of us have. Remember, the one person you're going to talk to the most in your life is yourself, the ego, the ego voice. And I've, I've always asked myself, who is this ego voice that I keep hearing? Who is that? Where does that come from? Again, we're uploading, we're downloading, we're connecting consciously. 
But when we get into communicating with voices and those that are no longer here, we move past the ego, we move past the higher self, and we start to take on impressions from those memories. Uh, uh, we may clairvoyantly see something in our mind, which is the third eye, which is right between your two physical eyes, right between the brow. Some call it the brow chakra. It lives in between the temples of your mind. Why do we call it a temple? I'm always fascinated about that. But we start to see clairvoyantly, which is clear seeing. We start to feel things clairsentently on our skin. The largest organ on the body is the skin. We claircognitively know something in our gut. That's why we say trust your gut. So energetically, we start to have these things that open up about knowing something. What is the trigger that, con that, that actually caused this? And then before you know it, we start to have conversations and what I call, you know, um, ADCs, after death communications. And then you're like, wait a minute, I'm talking with people that once lived. Now, this is different from angels and higher, you know, ascended masters and your spirit guides. A lot of times when we get into mediumship, mediumship is for someone that incarnated, lived a physical life had love, had pain, had failure, had memories, and then decarnated into the spiritual path. Some people can connect with angels and, and, and ascended masters. I have not yet. doesn't mean that I won't. But when it comes to mediumship, this is actually connecting to a physical being that once lived and no longer is living and coming through to bring through messages, evidence, um, love, healing. And when we get into the four categories of after-death communication experiences, the first one are what we call spontaneous ADCs. And spontaneous ADCs usually come when you are driving your car and all of a sudden, you know, this has happened to me where um, it's unexpected, it's uninvited, and I find a lot of times when I'm driving, my grandma will just pop into my, my mind. And I'm just having this conversation with my grandma, and before you know it, I don't even realize I was driving. Or I, how did I get to this place? Uh, these are called spontaneous ADCs, and they occur unexpectedly, and they're usually not invited. Now, the other, the second one of ADCs are what we call facilitated ADCs. And again, the facilitated ADCs are usually during a specific um, established protocol like me going to the college in England or me facilitating going down to study with Lisa Williams at the um, in my first workshop or going to the Omega Institute to study with John Holland and Janet Nohavik or going to the Berkeley Psychic Institute to unlock my intuition which really is the language of your own soul it's literally like tuning in to understand what is your language what is your soul trying to say to you so those are would be known as facilitated ADCs and again, there's usually an established protocol and it's within the direction of a trained facilitator or tutor. So those are the first two. When we come back from our last break, I will pick up the last two of, of ADCs, after death communications, and continue talking about the spiritual struggle of what is seen and what is unseen. We'll be back in two minutes here on Inspired Living Radio. Cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. 
For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. So Carl Sagan once said, I don't know where I'm going but I'm on my way. And there's so much truth to that. So right before the break, we were talking about how after death communications can be triggered and how to connect with what is unseen, just much very much like the spiritual wind. We see the effects of the wind on the trees. And as I look out my window here in my studio, I can see this big tree, which I I've named him big Zen is swaying back and forth, but I don't see what is actually causing him with my physical eye to move back and forth. Now, science would tell me that the wind is moving this tree, moving Big Zen, uh, but I don't see it. And again, a lot of people want to see it before they believe it. I always change that up. I always say believe it, see it, achieve it, or ask, believe, receive. Because when you ask and you set your intentions, if you want to connect with your loved one, if you want to connect um, with somebody that's been gone for a long time or somebody that just recently passed, The grieving process, the bereavement process is usually a trigger to create some sort of contact with the deceased. Now, I personally don't like to use the words death and dying. I teach on it. But when I say the word death, it implies to me an ending. And I found that it's not just an ending. It's actually a new beginning. And it's a next step on this larger staircase of of consciousness or life or spiritualism or whatever you want to call it. And it really is a, is a fascinating, if you're willing to prospect and you're willing to ask, believe, receive, some amazing things can unfold for you. And that's what I wanted to do with today's show and today's podcast is share my journey, my own struggles, my own uh, doubt, my own skepticism. Uh, and it's been quite an amazing journey. But again, it's it's that quote of Carl Sagan talking about, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm on my way. And that's kind of how it started with me is I don't know where I'm going and I still don't know where I'm going, but I'm trusting and I'm having patience for the unfoldment process. And it's been uh, it's been a journey. So, you know, I've had a lot of death and dying in my career and both personally and professionally and my own near death experience in a river accident, uh, being with somebody when they actually transitioned into the spirit world and and, and decarnated back um, into energy and and, and, um, frequency and vibration with my grandma as I held her hand and and brushed her hair. And, uh, you know, it's not something I didn't I didn't know I'd be doing this later in life. But I also found that life, you know, if you use the acronym for life, it's learn it from experience. And I, I know and I feel um, that, you know, life is not the end. It's just when we actually leave the physical body, it's actually a greater soul adventure that's taking place. And you personally can feel this if you choose to. Eckhart Tolle teaches us the greatest agent for uh change is our awareness. And Dr. Wayne Dyer teaches us all the time when you change the way that you look at things in your life right now, the things that you look at start to change. And that's a lot of truth. But all I can do is is on today's show, share this with you. It's up to you of your free will and your choice 
to make that uh, that decision to ask, to believe, to receive. So before the break, we were talking about the ADCs, after-death communications, of how you can uh, have different categories of after-death communications. The first one, like I said, was at what we call the spontaneous ADCs. Um, they just happen out of nowhere. You could be at a show and all of a sudden, you know, uh, your friend that you haven't thought about in 25 years pops into your head and he's coming to you from the other side saying, hey, remember when we used to watch this show um, and eat popcorn? I'm right here with you. Uh, like I said, they're only ever a thought away if you're open to that. The next one is the facilitated after death communications, facilitated workshops, going to the college in England to study mediumship and, and psychic awareness and intuition. The other ones that we were uh, that I was going to pick up here after the break was the requested after death communications. And these occur usually um, after an experience and, and, and specific practice. Um, again, this is something outside of a facilitated uh, role. This is something that if you have requested, you yourself, your intention, the energy that follows your intention, and you've requested for mom to come back and have a conversation. Or, you know, for example, this was kind of interesting, just, just happened this last week. A dear friend of ours, um, had committed suicide about a year and a half ago um, here in Seattle, and it was quite um, quite a jolt to the system because it's not somebody you would expect to uh, commit suicide. And uh, what's interesting is we were having dinner with our friend, and um, a birthday card from her in the envelope appeared. Uh, the house cleaner had found it behind a cabinet, and it was in her handwriting, and it was direct messages and it was a birthday card that somehow had fallen off the shelf, never got opened, but found its way back into our reality a year and a half after she left the physical world. Now, skeptic mind would say coincidence, synchronicity, but is it? Is it just the timing of everything? Because again, the only species that measures their life by time are humans. The only species that pays uh, to live here is humans. The only species that creates its own fear, drama, uh, depression, anxiety, humans. So all of that combined has been very interesting. So when you request something, and we've been requesting to have some sort of knowledge or a, a letter of why she committed suicide, we never did receive it, but then we have this birthday card. So I've always thought, you know, the request doesn't always happen when we want it to. And again, humans are really good wanting it right now on demand. But the spirit world doesn't have time. It doesn't have, you know, a, a, a construct of, you know, one hour increments in a 12 hour cycle in a 24 hour period. Um, the past, present, future in the spirit world, the etheric world, heaven, if you want to call it, whatever your belief system is, doesn't have time. So our time is not their time. And when we request something, doesn't mean it's going to happen right then and there. But I would challenge you to be patient with it and let the unfoldment take place because it could happen a, a day later, an hour later, a week later, a year later, in our case, a year and a half later. And so, again, when you request something, you're asking, you're bringing that intention. Ask, believe, receive. Now, notice I didn't put a timeline on that because, again, the timing is usually pretty consistent to um, help you on your journey, your healing, your doubts, uh, whatever you're going through. And a lot of times when we request it, uh, I say trust the spirit world and they'll, they'll deliver in some way or another. Again, it's not going to be this mighty voice from the sky. It could be, but usually is not. But they will come through different ways because, again, they don't have a voice like I'm talking to you now. They come through signs, symbols, synergy, synchronistic events, coincidences. Um, and if you're open to it, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm just looking on my counter here. I've got a stack of dimes because I always find dimes that are representation of my brothers. They always send me a dime before a hike or before a workshop or before reading. I've got a, literally a stack of dimes as a reminder of they can even come through in dimes. I, I've asked them why they haven't been sending me Benjamins. Uh, I could use I could use the uh, the hundred dollar spots, but um, maybe that'll come in the future. Uh, but the last one for the uh, after death communications is what we call assisted ADCs, and this usually is involved receiving messages from a deceased loved one, uh, and this is this includes animals, guys. This just is not humans. I find that a lot of people really resonate with their animals. And an assisted after-death communications is usually going to a psychic, spiritual medium. Now, I, I'd say focus on on the mediumship side because mediumship, especially spiritual mediumship, is very different than the psychic. The word psychic 
psychosis, which is broken down to of the soul. If you go to a reading uh, to have a psychic reading, that's going to be more focused on you, your energy, your life, your impressions, your career, your love life, what's going on with you. But when you really go to an assisted after death communication or a spiritual medium to connect, that medium should be bringing through um, experiences directly related to the person that they're trying to communicate to. Now, for me as a medium, I know that I work for the spirit world. The spirit world does not work for me. Um, so it's not guaranteed that who's going to come through uh, is going to be the person or the A-lister you're looking for. But I've also found that the right person comes through at the right time for what is needed. And if that medium doesn't bring through any loved one or bring through any connection, as a professional, they should give you your money back. Uh, I know that I offer a 20-minute uh, guarantee if I don't have some sort of connection. And it could be your grandma that you didn't even think about. It could be uh, Uncle Bob that you didn't really know that great in life. It could be a friend you haven't thought about in years or a sister or a friend from college or an animal that you had when you were a young child. But a lot of times I have found in doing hundreds of readings that it unfolds. And uh, I think in my career, I've only ever had to give two refunds back. And that's because the person just was not open to receive. And it was more like... Um, let's don't waste our time because time is our greatest commodity while we're here. You're not open to receive and um, very closed off and wanting proof. And, you know, it, it, I appreciate the skeptic mind, but somebody that's cynical um, usually is going to turn it back on you. You don't want to work with somebody like that. And it's just better to give them the money back and go about their day is what I'd recommend as a professional. But the assisted ADCs, again, is involved in using a medium. And again, a lot of people go by psychic medium. I like to say spiritual medium because it's really about connecting uh, with the essence of the loved ones and bringing through their memories and experiences and messages that they'll have for you. And again, some of the best evidence comes after the reading as well. And I always remind people of that. My mentor, Mavis Patilla, was very good and instrumental in teaching me that. And so I've had some really good mentors along the way, guys. So that's another thing I would recommend. Find a mentor, get into a spiritual development group, and, it, and make sure it feels right to you because this is your journey and you want to make sure. Um, there's already added pressure of the spiritual struggle. You don't need to add to it by having a uh, something that you are sitting in that you don't agree with. You know, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Uh, William D James talked about that, and, um, you know, I find that very true. Um you know, on the mindset. And so, you know, spiritual development, mentorship, uh, those are very, very important um, catalysts and very important for the spiritual journey and to help you and assist you on the spiritual struggle. I always remind people, you know, you've mastered survival mode up to this point. If you're listening to the show, hearing my voice, now it's time to live. And again, you don't, you may not know where you're going, like Carl Sagan talked about, but you're on your way. And if you can do that with a good, uh, spiritual network, a good tribe. Um, you know, I've got my tribe. You vibe with your tribe and good mentors that can help you see the bigger path, uh, see the bigger perspective, see the bigger picture. It's going to unfold for you in some amazing ways of your journey. And that's why I always say dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. Life is short and there's so many questions out there on, you know, what we're journeying for. You know, I read a book from Dan Millman that talked about you don't have to control your thoughts. You just have to stop them, letting them control you. And again, some of that comes from conditioning of how you were raised, your belief systems of religion. I was raised Catholic as a, um, a full adult in the Catholic Church, Catholicism, and it really was part of my struggle to be able to say, you know what? For me, spiritualism is about connecting to the divine. Spiritualism is about connecting to the God, whatever God is for you within Religion tends to be more crowd control. <laughs> so, um, you know, omnism, which is the belief of all truth in religion, and I really try to uh, teach on that as well, is that, you know, religion is good uh, depending on where you're at, where you're raised in the world. But the belief that no religion is truth, but the truth is found within them all, I would challenge you to look at the religions around the world and see what you resonate with. Um, it might be spiritualism. It might not. Uh, but it's it's been an interesting journey, and I, I just want to let you know that there is a struggle with that. It's normal. Um, be patient with it. Trust that. But again, the caterpillar doesn't become the butterfly without the cocoon phase of the struggle to sharpen the wings. The diamond or the charcoal doesn't become the diamond without the applied pressure. Uh, no pressure, no diamond. The small um, seedling that gets its insides ripped out in a dark place before it moves into the light. 
you know, uh, from small uh, acorns, mighty uh, oaks rise is the old saying, or as the saying goes. So I hope that this show today has inspired you. I like to say be inspired, inspire others, and definitely inspire before we expire. And if you're looking at, if you have a keyboard in front of you, you know, I always like to use con uh, control, alt, delete for those of you tech people out there, um, you know, control yourself. Alter your thinking, delete your negativity. And if you want to go deeper within the, the, the spiritual pathways of mediumship, psychic intuition, awareness, mindfulness, meditations, metaphysics, energy, frequency, and vibration, then start to prospect for what's right for you. And you will unlock some amazing doors. You will come across some amazing friendships, some amazing teachers, some amazing soul adventures. And I always go back to the Joseph Campbell quote, the cave you fear to enter usually holds a treasure you seek. And that's so true. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't get caught up in the fear and don't worry about failure. First attempt in learning. If you can embrace that, unlock those doors, you're going to have some amazing, amazing soul adventures. And you yourself may find yourself becoming an intuitive prospector in search of your own spiritual gold. So prospect for the life you desire and live it because that's what life is all about. And that's why we use the carp diem, um, philosophy of seize the day because your greatest commodity while you're here is your time and your greatest power while you're here is free will and choice to do what you want. So it's been an honor uh, hanging out with you this afternoon, this morning, this evening, or wherever you're at in the world and whatever time it is in that part of the world for you. If you want to learn more about the work I'm doing, just go to MarkLeanHart.com, Internet Search Intuitive Prospector. Uh, we'll be back with more shows here coming up of Inspired Living Radio. But until our next soul adventure together, be kind, be caring, be compassionate, and we'll see you for another episode of Inspired Living Radio. Namaste. Take care, everyone.